With more than 40,000 members and growing, the National Science Teachers Association is the world's largest professional organization representing science educators of all levels. Created by educators and for educators, this is NSTA Atlanta 23. The annual conference and expo kicks off today in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's an unparalleled professional learning experience for all. I'm Atria Godfrey, your host, and only NSTA TV is bringing you all the scientific fun and features. Today, we sit down with the current NSTA president about what this year's meeting has in store and what's new this year for attendees. Plus, we catch up with you, hear from fellow attendees about what they are looking forward to this year. And today, we kick off our tour across the world of the organizations and institutions at the forefront of new technologies and scientific teaching methods that you can take straight to your own classroom. It's an exciting first day ahead, and we want to make sure you can catch it all. There are plenty of ways to watch the latest NSTA TV episodes. You can find our content on the NSTA conference homepage or on the TVs placed throughout the conference center, on in-house channel 45 here at the Omni, or in-house channel 80 at the Westin. Plus, we post all our latest episodes and content on our Twitter and YouTube pages. We get started on this exciting first day with our sit-down interview with NSTA President Elizabeth Mulcairin. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Well, thank you for having me, Audrey. Absolutely. Okay, first off, congratulations on your role. You are more than halfway through your term as president now. Okay. What goals have you already been able to accomplish and what is there still left on the to-do list? Oh, wow. So this, this past year has been a whirlwind. Um, we created a new strategic plan and started the implementation process and have spent time around the country visiting all the different state chapters and telling them about all the new initiatives. We've worked on um, governance, so we're looking at a new governance uh, format and restructure. So there's been a ton that we've been doing this year. Anything still left that you would like to accomplish before your time comes to an end? Uh, yes, yeah. so <laughs> one, one of the big initiative is advocacy and having a voice for, for educators. Mm -hmm. The National Science Teaching Association board and staff have been working really hard at trying to um, increase the volume, increase the voices of science teachers across the country. I'm sure they are very appreciative for that. All right, there's a redesign to the meeting this year. What uh -huh. is different and why the change? So, um, of course, we had a time off where we yeah. were able to rethink of our conferences and what's the purpose and really feel it, reaching out to our members and finding out what our members want. And really, our members want a place where they can become energized and rejuvenated with all the new science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities, uh, careers, and um, uh, curriculum out there, but also reconnecting themselves with other educators across the nation where they can really talk through all the different issues, all the different uh, wins, successes that they're facing across the country. You talk about their need to be rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. One of the key themes this year is teacher burnout and uh -huh. obviously trying to avoid that. And how can we try to combat that? One of the things that we're doing here at the conference is we have yoga in the morning or we have coffee chats. We have um, a bird of a feather um, area in the hub, the NSTA hub, so people can sit down and just really talk talk through everything that they're faced with. Yeah, a lot of times that connection yeah. is what you need to get rejuvenated, to light that spark back. Burnout aside, what else do you hear from educators as far as what some of the biggest challenges are that they face, obstacles? What is it that you hope they'll take home with them from this conference? Uh, a lot of great new ideas <laughs> is what we're hoping for. We're hoping that they'll be able to reflect on what they're doing in their classroom and taking in um, what, some of these wonderful um, examples of what can be done in the classroom or how they can do it in the classroom. Mm -hmm. All right, we have to end on a fun note here. Yeah. You serve as the Vice President of education at the Omaha Zoo and Aquarium. Let's start off with your favorite animal and then are there any that you just are a little scared of? Give you the heebie-jeebies. Uh, yeah, so uh, today my favorite animal is a giraffe. Okay. <laughs> so, no, so giraffes, I, I love giraffes. All animals are, are great. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. Appreciate it and best of luck this week. Yeah, thank you.
Have you ever seen what it looks like on the inside of a beehive or wondered why we need to be paying close attention to our pollinators? Well, let's head to George Mason University where the Honey Bee Initiative is focusing on research and outreach on the importance of honeybees. Pollinators are absolutely essential to food security throughout the world. They pollinate about a third of what we ultimately eat. As small a creature as they are, they're critical in the whole order of things to make this world turn. The George Mason University Honey Bee Initiative involves all of the colleges and schools at the university and partnerships outside of the university to educate people about sustainable beekeeping and the importance of pollinators to our health. The multidisciplinary approach has been central to our success. It means that everybody at George Mason University owns the Honey Bee Initiative. It highlights for us the importance of multiple disciplines solving grand challenges of our time. Everyone who comes to learn about the honeybees is profoundly moved by the experience. They truly are wondrous creatures. Here now in studio with us is someone who has dedicated her career to improving the integration of science into everyone's daily lives. NSTA Executive Director Erica Shugart joins us now in studio. Thank you for your time this morning. Wonderful to be here. Pleasure to have you. Let's get started with you know what you've done so far with your career. I would imagine someone who is passionate about getting science into folks' daily lives would say that it needs to start very young. We need to get kids excited about science education, correct? Absolutely. We, we have to actually Actually, not get kids excited because if you've ever been around a kid, <laughs> you know that they're a natural scientist, right? If you're around a three-year-old, all they do is ask why, 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 mm -hmm. which is exactly what a scientist does. So really the role of science educators is to keep that passion in students and to help them focus it so that they can grow up and someday really explore the world and learn something new for all of us. You're exactly right. I mean, young kids are, they all want to be scientists when they grow up. Why is it that you think maybe the interest starts to wane as they get older? In the past, a lot of the way of our approach to science education was memorize this, mm. learn that fact, and it can really be dispiriting for kids. We're so excited about all the new ways that science teachers approach their classrooms now, which are sense-making and phenomenon-based, where the students come in and really get to ask their questions first, and then the teachers are there to help facilitate and guide. It's just really a great way to keep kids excited about science, and we're thrilled that our educators are taking that approach in their classrooms. Well, keeping the focus on educators, that's what this conference is about. What do you hear from them as far as some of the most challenging issues or the most pressing issues that they face right now? All teachers, not just science teachers, are under tremendous pressure right now. Not only are they expected to be in the classroom, but they might be covering extra classes because people are out and there are not enough mm. subs. They might be working with the social emotional concerns of mm. students. And they, of course, um, you know, already were under pressure. There are a lot of systemic issues that are in education that have really come to a head in COVID and post COVID. So we are really happy that we're here to help teachers recharge and energize and get inspired. What is NSTA doing um, to help those teachers and to try and get them back on track and re-energized? <laughs> we have daily dues, short lesson plans that they can bring into their classroom. We have professional learning, both asynchronous and synchronous. We have journals and books. So we are really here to support the science educator no matter what they need. Do you feel that there is enough focus on science education in the United States? Do you feel like that subject gets enough attention? So unfortunately, science education does not get enough attention in the United States. There's a lot of emphasis on math and English language arts, particularly at the elementary school levels. You know, people only spend about 5% of their life in the classroom, so the informal sector is really important too. And people going to museums, zoos, and all of those after school kinds of activities. All right, let's wrap up with, uh, what are some of your objectives or your goals um, during your time as executive director? Something you would like to see happen? Sure, so NSTA has a really exciting new strategic plan uh, that just launched last year. We have five major goals around knowledge and practice, building community, advocacy, making sure that we're a sustainable business, and over all of them, the absolutely essential focus on diversity, equity, mm -hmm. and inclusion. So I'm really excited to be able to execute on that plan, and people can come and learn more about it during the town hall on Saturday. 
Wonderful. Well, pleasure to have you with us this morning. Thank you for your time. Likewise. Great to be here. So we've heard from members of the executive team about how this year's meeting is set to be one of the best ones yet, but we wanted to hear from you. What are you and your fellow attendees looking forward to the most this year? So this is actually my first year as a teacher. So I'm really excited to come to the conference and get different ideas on how to make science engaging and just making uh, scientific citizens overall. Um, I'm really excited to just see how I can incorporate all of the new technology into my class and just in general to just get kids to be more responsive to science um, as a whole. We were supposed to present in Boston, but unfortunately that got canceled and so we are super excited to come back to here um, and present the cards that we were going to be presenting in Boston on science and engineering practices and cross-cutting concepts. I always believe in thinking about best practices, learning practices for students. Um, I wanted to do, explore the different labs and simulations to make it engaging and I'm just super excited to really just refine my lessons for my students and make sure that they are becoming uh, literate in science and everything. First time NSTA, first time teacher, I'm excited uh, to find out all the best practices for my students and I want to learn how to make science more engaging for my students now and in the future. It's just a way to re-energize. You get to network with new educators, you get to see what new things are up and coming, and it's just really great to be back together with like-minded science friends. <laughs> get ready to step into the past with the latest collaboration between La Brea Tar Pits and the University of Southern California Rozier School of Education. In their project, Tar AR, they're revolutionizing learning experiences with augmented reality to bring the paleontology and natural history of the tar pits to life. Let's see how this cutting edge technology is changing the game for both education and exploration. We think that augmented reality gives teachers a tool to use in their classroom or museum educators a tool to use in informal learning environments. What AR and VR, virtual reality, can do is it can take the student to places that they can't go on their own, maybe to the surface of the moon or under the ocean. What we were able to do here at La Brea Tar Pits was take them into the past. Every single one of our AR animals is actually built off of one of the skeletons right here in the museum. You learn something just by seeing the animals and seeing how they move, seeing how they walk, seeing how they interact with each other. There's something really magical about being able to see what these Ice Age animals would have looked like walking around and something they really can't get without an experience like this. So TAR AR is really going to bring Ice Age Los Angeles to life for learning communities in a way that we can't currently do without it. In our first session spotlight, let's check out how NSTA educators are transforming teaching through curriculum-based professional learning. Our session today is about Open Syed High School, a three-year open source high school science curriculum. Today, attendees are learning about the program, the whole three-year program, um, the instructional model and all of its components, and they're also experiencing the launch to one of our units um, as students. We're getting to do a run-through of a biology lesson on ecosystem dynamics and interactions which here in the state of Georgia, um, for those of us who teach biology and environmental science, the first unit that we teach is on ecology and the very first section of that unit is on ecosystem dynamics. So it's really helpful, it's really exciting. Um, I've actually learned some things in the session today that I didn't know. This is really important because engaging as a student in the lessons will help teachers really understand the ideas that their students have and will help them um, navigate with their students um, throughout the, the lessons and the units and the course. I am looking forward to taking back um, new phenomenon that I can use with my students. I've learned that to get my students involved and engaged in what I have to teach 
teach. I have to present them with real world problems and concepts. It's just really great to be here and to be amongst like-minded individuals who are all working towards making science education more equitable and inclusive for students around the country. The Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment, or GLOBE, is an organization created in 1994 by then Vice President Al Gore to provide STEM professionals with the scientific knowledge necessary to tackle Earth's biggest mysteries. GLOBE is Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment. It's an international science and education program. It was established in 1994 and for the last 27 years it has been bringing scientists, students, teachers and now the general public together. GLOBE Mission Earth is actually a partnership between the University of Toledo, Boston University and Tennessee State works with historically black colleges and universities, UC Berkeley, West Ed, and then also we work with other entities like the Department of Education in New Mexico, Los Angeles Libraries, Xavier University in New Orleans. So our goal is to spread what we're doing with Globe Mission Earth across the country. Globe's future looks very bright and the reason is because we have a very strong community that's made up of teachers and students just like you. You can get involved and become part of this great program. That's a wrap on day one of NSTA Atlanta 23. We hope you've enjoyed our sit down interviews, hearing all of the exciting things in store this week and the tour of organizations finding new breakthroughs to bring science to life. Remember, if you missed any part of today's program, there are plenty of ways to catch everything NSTA TV has to offer. You can find our content on the NSTA conference homepage or on the TVs placed throughout the conference center on in-house channel 45 here at the Omni or in-house channel 80 at the Westin. Plus, we post all our latest episodes and content on our Twitter and YouTube pages. Thanks for spending this first day here with us. There is still much more to come this week and we can't wait to see you right back here tomorrow. Have a great one.